Good morning. Welcome to the DFS Army YouTube channel. I am Razzle Eleven. You can find me at Razzle Eleven Grinds on Twitter. I'm going to take a look at some pitching options for today, uh, Monday the fifteenth, and it looks like we have a ten game slate. I believe it is. That is correct. Um, you see at the top, I don't have every team checked. Uh, because it looks like Texas is unsure of who they're going to start. Uh, I believe I saw last night that it looked like Dane Dunning, but uh, we'll be waiting to see who they roll with. Not that I'm going to be interested in anybody against Atlanta. Um, not really a bold call or anything. So let's take a look. Um, kind of some questionable pitching options, really. Uh, feel like we're going to have to take some chances in our pool. Uh, definitely some guys that I don't feel super confident in that I'm going to probably end up having 15 to 20% of. So it's going to be an uneasy night for me. Uh, I generally like to have a pretty good feeling about my pitching and just let my, my stacks do their thing. And hopefully the combinations work out. So we're going to look here at the top. Framer Valdez, strong option. Uh, coming off of what might even be a career best performance. I didn't didn't dig in, uh, but I have to assume those 12Ks are probably a career high for him. Um, not really known to be a huge K guy. Obviously can get the 7, 8, and 9s, um, but just an extreme ground ball guy. Um, which wasn't the case against the Angels, surprisingly, but the 12 strikeouts, extremely nice. Cubs, we just picked on the Cubs lineup with the Minnesota pitching staff over the weekend. Uh, so we're going to go right back to it with Valdez and Houston. 10.7K is a little up there, uh, but on a slate like this with pitching being somewhat questionable, I I understand why he's the most expensive uh, at that price range. So, uh, Velas is going to be the, the for sure SP1 on the slate to me, um, as far as if you're playing cash games, which I don't play, but um, it's pretty clear to me. Going underneath here, we have Pablo Lopez. I think he's a sneaky option against a very difficult Dodgers team. Uh, does have blow up capability. Has been really great on the road this year. Um, I'm very interested in him just because I think he's going to be very low owned. Uh, I wish we had access to some projected ownership early this morning so I can get an idea. But uh, he's somebody that I will have shares of for GPP purposes. If he is under 10% owned, my goal will probably be to double the field or at least the projected field. And take my chances there. George Kirby, uh, coming off of his best performance of the season, he generally has been increasing his output uh, from a fantasy standpoint. That Oakland game was a little rough, just didn't get any strikeouts. Um, but prior to that, was increasing his strikeout output, uh, lengthening inning wise, uh, really well. My my worry here is the. Game in Boston, uh, looking at the weather, has some strong wind blowing out to right. Uh, it's not going to be super warm by any means, but with that wind blowing out to right, I do have some concerns, uh, but I do think Kirby is definitely in play. He is a favorite. The game does have a higher total on the slate. And the power do he does give up are two left-handed hitters. So there is some some worry there. So he's not some lock for me, but he will be in my pool. Freddy Prota has the upside. Uh, we see some strong performances, three in a row here, and five out of his seven. Shut down the Cardinals early this season. I'm going to have to dig in to look to see how they were performing at this time. Uh, we know that the Cardinals had recently gone through some big struggles, but now they've won six out of their last seven. So their team is playing better. 
uh, they're coming back home. But I think Peralta just has the upside that we want in GPPs. You know, at one point he was 10.7K this season. So to have him at 9K, very interesting. The wind's blowing in in St. Louis tonight as well. So um, very interested in the upside in Peralta. Merrill Kelly, going to be somebody that we feel pretty strongly about. I would guess that Kelly and Valdez are the cash SP pairings. Kelly, coming off of a rough start, uh, was really great prior to that. Has been spectacular on the road in his three starts, along just two run runs so far. So, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to pick on Oakland. I know sometimes they do score some runs. It just feels like a slate where, you know, aside from maybe Valdez at the top, and even then, I think we're going to have pitchers, you know, give up two or three runs. But we're just going to try to find some guys that might have the 8 to 10, 11K upside, and hopefully it comes through for us. Uh, initially, I was thinking I was going to want Charlie Morton in my pool, but to me, he just, I know he's coming off a great game against Boston. He's been pretty bad on the road. K numbers down, walks way up. Like, just the overall numbers on the road uh, don't intrigue me all that much. And I know Texas is, has been putting up runs, but they generally have done it against some left-handed pitching. So, like, that's kind of what had me interested. But I think I would rather just go with Hunter Green. Yes, Hunter Green is pitching in Coors. I understand that. Colorado just isn't that great of a team. Hunter Green went away from home. Has numbers that are much stronger. Uh, hasn't won a game yet this year, but on the road still is averaging 20 DK points per game. I like the upside. I understand the risk that goes with it in Colorado, but that's okay. I'm willing to take my chances. I don't think I can get on Tanner Houck. Just allows a little too much. Um, not showcasing big strikeout upside. Uh, multiple runs allowed in every start this season. I think we can just we can get that from different spots with more upside. So uh, Tanner Hawk just not going to make my player pool. Um, so him along with Morton are the two guys, which Morton as a fade probably shouldn't shock many people, but. Uh, we get to Alec Manoa, guy that has been on my fade list for much of the season. I think I might be going to him in this spot. His last start against Philly is really concerning. More walks and strikeouts. Strikeouts have gone down the last couple starts as well. Uh, he did dominate against this Yankee squad uh, less than a month ago. So I think I am going to be interested in Manoa, and it's kind of worrisome, but uh, I do need to, to get a few more pitchers in my pool to make things work. Uh, so Manoa is going to make it. Michael Walker is going to make it as well. Back-to-back -back strong starts. Uh, trending is in the right directions. K's really aren't there, but he is facing Kansas City. He is at home, you know, in a ballpark that's pretty good for pitching as well. Maybe might not have the you know, 7, 8K upside that we want. I don't know how we struck out 10 against Atlanta. Um, but I think he has a, a route to, you know, not allowing a whole lot of hits tonight. And maybe, you know, one to two runs is possible in his five to six innings. Not really a guy I'm excited to roster, but he fits what we're looking for. On this particular slate. I really am trying my hardest to not want to play Jack Flaherty. He has looked absolutely horrendous for most of the season. Uh, you know, he does flash. You know, Toronto, even though he walks seven. Seattle. But I just don't know what I want to do. He was solid against Milwaukee the first time, minus the the walks issue to begin the season. The walks came back last game, uh, so it was worrisome. He had a lot of comments after the game, uh, did not endear himself to 
any baseball fans, really. Um, but I generally like to pick on Milwaukee with pitchers, but maybe right now might not be the right case. I might just want to stick to left-handed pitchers against the Brewers. Uh, Tyen, not really going to be interested to me. He should almost be stretched out, so maybe he'd be an option, but I just... I'd rather, with him, I want to see him get to the 85 to 90 pitch mark uh, rather than try to predict it at this point. Wood would have been in my pool if I thought he would throw enough pitches. He just threw an inning of relief the other day. Uh, had been out for a while, only up to 31 pitches. I, I'm i going to guess he's maybe topped out at 60, so uh, I'm just not willing to go that route. Wanted to be interested in Syndergaard, but he left last game with a lacerated finger. Coming back, I'm just not sure that, you know, it's 100% good to go. There's too much of a risk for him to to have that finger pop open again, and we only get three innings out of him. Uh, so I'm not really going there. The one guy down here that I am considering right now is Bailey Falter. Ugly, right? Like these numbers are pretty bad. Does doesn't really have a ton of K upside. His K numbers look a lot like Mike Walker. You know, small, small, they jump up and then back to being small again. The main reason I'm considering Bailey Falter, San Francisco is horrible against left handed pitching. So I want to try to take advantage of that. I just don't know if I can close my eyes and click his name yet. Um, I am interested, though. Um, so I'll keep everybody updated, you know, throughout the day with DFS Army on if I'm going to end up there. But uh, right now he's kind of on the, the fringe uh, as far as if I'm going to use him. But I do think we need somebody down here just to be a little different. So uh, of the options, Falter is the one that intrigues me enough. Uh, for me to take a chance. So there we have it. There's my look at pitching for today. Uh, a little longer video again. If you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification on bell, notification bell on. Holy cow. Uh, and you'll be notified anytime we post a video here at DFS Army. If you want to join us at DFS Army and get a look at our tools, get access to the coaches and chat. I will put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, R-A-Z, for 10% off your monthly membership. And as always, best of luck, everybody.